Okay, guys, if you want to ace your next job interview, I'm going to take you through the exact process that helped me land a corporate sales job at Nike. If this is your first time on the channel, my name is Sash. I teach people how to land high paying sales jobs at the companies that they want to work at. If you need help with that, tap in with me in the description below and we'll get on a call. Okay, guys, step one in this entire process is research. Most people are not going this deep, but look at the company's latest earnings call. What do their numbers look like? What is their strategy? Where do they need work? What does their leadership team look like? The people that are at the top, what's their experience? Where have they come from? What is the company's mission and values? What are they trying to achieve? What is their past strategy? What is their current strategy? What is the competition doing? How is this company different from the competition? Industry trends. Is there a shift towards e-com? Is there a shift towards digital? Check their website. Check their social media. What did they post? And lastly, get deep. Look at company reviews. And when I say company reviews, look at their customers. What do the customers at the company that you're interviewing for? Think about them. Okay, go extremely deep, guys. Okay, guys, a really good tool that I use for researching a company is this tool called Perplexity. Think about Google search and ChatGPT, but together. And the biggest difference between Perplexity and ChatGPT is that it cites real sources. So I've just inputted a prompt that says, listen, I have a job interview for a senior account executive position at Uber. I want to know everything that there is to know about Uber. And what it's going to do is that it's going to source different articles based on what I'm looking for. And there we go, guys. It has details about their earnings call, their leadership team, their mission and strategy, the competition, the customer perception of Uber. This is a very quick way to gather research about the company that you're interviewing with. Okay, step number two, guys, is to understand the job role that you're interviewing for. Okay, so this was the exact job posting, guys, that the president of Nike Canada forwarded over to me. She was my referral, and she said, hey, Sash, we have this internal field sales position that is available. I want you to apply. So as soon as I got the job posting and I learned that I had an interview with Nike, what I started to do was I started to think of experiences that relate to what they're asking me to do in this job. So for example, a successful Canada partner rep will have a proven record of leveraging industry consumer and account data, insights, and analytics to make decisions and drive change. Now, in my situation specifically, I was working at FedEx at the time. I was doing sales over there. We were very analytics oriented, looking at the type of service that each of our clients was using, the amount of volume and the amount of packages that we were moving every day. We were extremely data centric. So I could think back to multiple experiences where I had to source insights and analytics to make decisions and drive change for clients. The candidate should have a strong knowledge of product and business trends. So my product was a service. It was a shipping service. Can I think back to an experience where the product knowledge that I had helped me close a deal? Do you see what I'm trying to do, guys? So what I've done is I've highlighted the important parts of this job posting, and I'm trying to source specific experiences that I've had that can help me with this interview. And the reason why I'm doing this, guys, is that this can turn into a behavioral question in an interview. Tell me about a time when you've used market knowledge and product trends to close a deal. Tell me about a time when you've had to collaborate internally to deliver a strategic pricing solution. Tell me about a time when you weren't able to close a deal because the competition offered something better. I'm not going to go through all of this, but what I'm trying to say is identify the important points in your job posting and try to cite experiences personal experiences that relates back to what they're looking for. Okay, the next thing that you want to do is prepare answers for the standard questions. Now guys, regardless of who you interview with, there are always going to be fundamental interview questions that are always going to be asked. Tell me about yourself. Why do you want to work here? Why should we hire you? Tell me about your biggest weakness. Describe a challenging situation and how you handled it. Interviewers are not necessarily going to be asking these exact questions, but they're going to be asking variations of these questions. And this is 75 percent of the interview guys if you're able to nail these questions down you've practically aced the interview now in my specific case with nike i had a huge advantage because i networked with a bunch of nike people prior to getting my interview with nike so what i did was i actually reached out to each and every single one of them i said hey i actually have an interview with nike do you have any pointers for the nike interview process and almost every single one of them provided value to me with one person going above and beyond and providing me with the potential list of questions that the the interviewer might ask me. So I took those questions and I wrote
wrote down answers to all of these questions, guys. And this is exactly what you need to be doing, okay? Tell them what they want to hear. Relevance is key. If someone says, tell me about yourself, and you're talking about the times that you're drinking and you're going out to the clubs, and it's not relevant. That has no relevance to the situation. When someone asks you, where do you see yourself in five years? Okay, that's the question. Subconsciously, you know that what they want to hear is that they want to hear me grow within this company. So my answer, if I'm applying for an account executive role is, listen, I have the goal to be a director at this company within the next five years. That is an example of an answer they want to be hearing. The wrong way to answer this question is, oh, I want to make a pivot into a different industry. You don't necessarily want to be with us. What are they looking for with this question, guys? They're looking for longevity. They're looking for retention. They want to retain their employees. Even if you want to switch industries five years from now, you don't tell them that. You have to be strategic with your answers. You have to give them what they want to hear. Okay, guys, practice and memorize the answers to these questions. You want to know the answers to these questions at the back of your hand. It should come as second nature to you. I'm telling you, if you nail this down, you have majority of the interview taken care of. Now, there is the remaining portion of the interview, okay? And there are specific behavioral questions based on the role that you're applying for. Behavioral questions are designed to assess your past experiences. And this is the time to showcase your skills and competencies. What you wanna do is answer this in the star format. If you guys are not familiar with this, this is situation, task, action and result. These are some examples of behavioral questions. Tell me about a time when you've reached a goal and how you achieved it. Tell me about a time when you've had to manage more than one priority. Tell me about a time when you've had to work closely with a coworker you did not get along with. Okay, those are examples of behavioral questions. And let's give an example answer to question number one. Tell me about a time when you've reached a goal and how you achieved it. The situation, in my sales role at XYZ company, we had a goal to increase quarterly sales by 20%. The task, I was tasked with developing and implementing a new sales strategy. The action, I analyzed your sales data to identify high potential leads, implemented a new CRM system to track progress, and conducted training sessions for the team to improve their sales skills. So this is an example of someone at the director level, okay, because they're managing a team. We not only achieved the 20% increase, but we exceeded it by reaching a 25% increase in sales by the end of the quarter. This is how you want to be answering behavioral questions in your interview. So guys, what I really recommend you guys do to take this a step further in terms of preparation, Google your target role plus behavioral questions. So here we go. Let's say you're interviewing for an AE position, account executive plus behavioral interview questions. And I guarantee you, if you go through these articles, you will find value. You will find the potential list of questions that you can prepare answers to, and then you can practice. Okay. Big cheat code. And you can also leverage AI for help. Go on ChatGPT and ask GPT, what are the set of behavioral questions that an interview might ask for an account executive role? GPT is another resource that you can use. Guys, let's not forget a very important part of the interview process, which is asking questions for your interviewer. A lot of the times when interviewers ask, do you have any questions for me? People will respond with, no, I'm good. Guys, I'm telling you, you're shooting yourself in the foot if you're doing that. Always have questions ready. Always have thoughtful questions ready for your interviewer. And guys, here's why. You want to have a trifecta of questions. So three questions that are ready to be fired off. One question that is geared towards gaining insight for yourself, gaining insight about the person that you're speaking with, and gaining insight about the company. And I'll explain what I mean by this by the following three questions. Now, this is an example. Now, let's say you're speaking with the hiring manager. So the person that you're going to be directly reporting to in this interview. Here are three questions that you can be asking them. Number one, how can I guarantee my involvement in strategic projects that will move this company exponentially forward? Now think about this question for a second. It's a very powerful question. Number one, it showcases initiative. Number two, it showcases that you care about your development. But number three, the most important one is that you care about moving this company forward. It is one thing to care about your own success. It is another thing to care about the people around you and their success. Okay, so very important question to ask. Number two, fast forward one year, you look back on this hire, what did they do to exceed every expectation? Now guys, I saw this somewhere on LinkedIn, but I thought this was an amazing question to ask. You're projecting yourself one year into the future and you're asking the hiring manager, what did this person do to succeed? Now, depending on what the hiring manager says, you can take their suggestions and their answers and implement that within your first 30 days. And you're going to look like a 
fucking legend for doing that. So guys, with this question, you can gain insight as to what this person's expectation is for you. And number three, what do you believe is the one differentiating point that makes this company different from its competition? Again, this is going to make the other person think, how are we different? How are we unique? What problems do we solve that no one else is solving? How are we a leader in the industry? The answer to this question is good for you to know. It'll help you believe in a bigger way what this company is trying to do and how they're trying to achieve that goal. And it causes the person on the other side to think. And you want them to think, guys. You want to ask good questions in which they're thinking once they're done the interview. Wow, no one's ever asked me that before. Okay, that is the goal with this. Lastly, you want to have a mic drop moment within your interview. You want to be creative. Now, for these interviews at Nike, when I knew that we were concluding, I said, hey, there's one last thing I want to leave you guys with. And what I did, guys, was I took one of their marketing campaigns. And Nike's Dream Crazy campaign with Colin Kaepernick was a memorable campaign that stood out for me. And at the end of the interview, I said, there's one thing I want to leave you with. And I segued into reciting the words from this campaign. Is that calling a dream crazy is not an insult. It's a compliment. And I was talking to the interviewer saying, if people say your dreams are crazy, if they laugh at what you think you can do, good, stay that way. And I recited this whole thing in front of the interviewer. And I said, so don't ask if your dreams are crazy, ask if they're crazy enough. So thank you for your time and I'll see you at work. I might be doing a movie with you soon, man. Oh yeah? Yeah, for sure. I'll see you at work. Yeah, for sure. <laughs> Guys, that's how I ended the interview, okay? When I was reciting this to the interviewer on the other side, they're possibly thinking, yo, this guy's crazy like he's weird okay but this was an example of me being creative how many other people at nike would have interviewed nike doing something like this maybe there might be a couple other people but i know it wasn't a lot so i knew i had to stand out and leave a lasting impression some way even in that last line where i said thank you for your time i'll see you at work i'll see you at work is a risky line to use guys you don't want to be using that for for everyone but if you got along with your interviewer if you're laughing if you've built up some good rapport your demeanor, your aura, your confidence, it goes a long way, guys. If you believe you deserve this role, the way that you talk and the way that you act will shine through through your conversation. When I was going through this interview process, I believed that this role deserved to be mine. Okay, so don't be afraid to let the other person know that you want this. So I can't tell you what your mic drop moment is going to be, but be creative, guys. Do things that other people are not willing to do. That is how you stand out in your interview process. And last thing, I'm going to reiterate this again and again and again. Practice. We're talking about practice, man. Please practice. There is a skill and an art to interviewing. The person that prepares is the person that wins. If you wing an interview, you might get that job offer here and there. But if you want those high quality positions that pay six figures, you are going to have to prepare. Okay, guys, I want to see you guys win. You already know it's love. My name is Sash. Peace.